So the brilliant French mathematician Pascal discovered this incredible result from projective geometry, um, which is called his hexagon theorem. I've discussed it a little bit in previous videos. Basically, it says that if you take six points around a circle and you use those points to draw a hexagon and then you link opposite lines of the hexagon, those will give you three points. And Pascal says that those three points will lie on a line, shown here in purple. We could call this Pascal's line of the six points. Now, the really remarkable thing is that this result still holds even if you swap around the order of the points. In fact, it even holds if you replace the circle with an ellipse, or in fact any conic at all, like a hyperbola. In fact, even Pappus's theorem can be viewed as a special case of Pascal's results. Not bad for a teenager. Now, um, What's interesting, though, is that there was another brilliant young French mathematician who came some time later, called Briachon, who actually discovered the dual to Pascal's results. Now, there is a kind of duality between lines and points in projective geometry. And so, you can take any result, such as Pascal's result, which says that if you have six points around a circle, then that defines a unique line. And you can swap around every instance of line with point and point with line. And then you get Briachon's theorem, which basically says that if you draw six lines around the outside of the circle so that they meet it tangentially, then those six lines are going to define a unique point, which is known as the Briachon point. So, in particular, um, by drawing six lines that meet this circle uh, tangentially, you're essentially constructing a hexagon which the circle just fits inside. And then, if you join opposite vertices of this um, hexagon, then that will give you three lines. And it turns out that those three lines, well, they always meet at a specific point called the Briachon point. So Pascal's, Pascal's construction gives you three points on a line. Briachon's construction gives you these three lines that all have a common point. And so this is called the Briachon point. And there's some interesting relationships between the Briachon point and Pascal's line. In fact, I believe, um, although I don't think I've seen a proof of it, but I believe that um, I'm sort of guessing that the Briachon point, sorry, the Pascal's line is going to be the polar of the Briachon point. So this is to do with some work uh, that Apollonius did a long time ago. So um, basically, if you have a circle and a point, say, outside of a circle, then you can, well, let's call that, um, so we can define the polar of that point to be the unique line that goes through a circle, um, which passes through the two points that you get if you draw these kind of, uh, a kind of minimal wedge around the circle. Um, sorry, that's not very clear. Um, what I basically mean is, think about this Briachon point. That's where these three red lines meet. Now, think about the smallest kind of wedge or segment that you can draw, um, which has a vertex at that point, which contains this circle. Essentially, that means you're going to be drawing these two tangents uh, to the circle that pass through the Briachon point. So I'm drawing these in yellow. Now, see where these yellow lines, and I've drawn them. Excuse me. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to draw these yellow lines in, which meet tangentially. Um, so you get something that looks like a spotlight being shone from the Briachon point. 
and then um, they're going to clip the circle tangentially. And then, in fact, what I claim is that if you join the two places where these lines touch the circle tangentially, that actually gives you Pascal's line. So Pascal's line is the polar of the British on point.